Hey guys, welcome back to my... <laughs> it's been so long I forgot my intro. Hello lovers of the world, this is Sinta speaking. Welcome to Music and Monthlies, the series where I talk about the new music I listened to in the past month and set up my calendar for the next one. Yeah, this is late. And what? <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I'm just lucky I'm turning out videos at all. <laughs> Anyway, as usual, we got heaps to go through, so let's just get into the music that I listened to in the month of March. We started off the month with Baekhyun's self-titled Japanese release. As a soloist separate from EXO, Baekhyun is certainly able to carry on his own, and this EP utilizes his prospects on a pretty decent R&B release. I was hoping for something as catchy as Candy, a song which he released the year before, but this is a pretty well put together project despite the lack of outstanding tracks. Soteji and the Boys is best known for being the pioneers of K-pop, so I thought I'd listen to the OGs since I was doing a video about the origins of K-pop sometime in the future, or I would like to do one in sometime in the future. Their first album has an unpolished quality that gives it a certain kind of charm. For example, Soteji is not a great vocalist by any means. But him trying to sing anyway makes him sound more earnest. The few times that the other members do sing, the harmonies are weak, but even then, that's endearing to a certain extent. The corny English verses are more amusing rather than cringy per se, which of course stems from Soteji, himself being the songwriter, having English as his second language. Blind Love, the English version of Nan Arayo, why'd I say that? The whitest way. <laughs> The English version of Nan Arayo, for example, has a great first verse, and then the song kind of descends into coherency afterwards. There are obvious disco references and sampling choices, such as the Everybody Dance Now, that allude to Soteji's brief stay in the US. The album goes off into little tangents. Of course, hip hop and dance are prominently displayed genres while embellished with rock and metal influences. But there are some synth pop songs that I can't imagine were heavily inspired by the likes of New Order. I guess these traits really highlight Soteji's status as the precursor to the K pop idol groups present these days, in the same way that most K pop albums tend to be eclectic with their genres and projects. Regardless, this album, whether intending to or not, feels both like a nostalgic trip down memory lane while feeling incredibly contemporary at the same time. I haven't done a track by track analysis in a fat minute, but this EP is giving me so much to talk about, so let's get into it. Fireworks only works well if you already like pre um, previous title tracks from 80s because it's a pretty par for the course title track from 80s, and since I was never a big fan of their actual title tracks, this doesn't really do much for me, but I can see how this would appeal to a lot of their um, diehard fans. It does sound a lot like the 80s, classic 80s sound. Leaders is just too much. There's too much going on at the same time. It's trying to be a hip hop song while teetering on the edge of rave music with a bit of hyper pop thrown in the chorus. I wish they would just let it be one thing. I think it works best as a hip hop song if we took out all the unnecessary elements. I actually feel like in another world, I would have loved it if they just pulled back just a little bit, you know? The trap rolling snares and the excessive onomatopoeia are an absolute sensory overload, and it's not helped by the fact that their voices are auto tuned to hell. And normally, I really do like auto tune when it's done well, but that means putting it in the right places, that means doing it tastefully, and that means utilizing it only when you need to. But their auto tuned onomatopoeia just sounds like another layer of electronic clutter that does not need to be there. I think this could have been a really good track if they decided to cut back. This feels more like a demo in that way. Like, if they had listened to this a bit longer, they'd realize that there was way too much going on. Time of Love is another track that's very confused as to what it's meant to be. There's the reggae, cutesy schoolboy vibes wrapped in way too many trap trimmings. In the classic 80s way, I feel like the cornucopia of sounds they offer creates a soundscape that is excellent for multiple listens. Each time you listen to it, you uncover another aspect of the song that you didn't realize was there. To me, I hear that quality in a lot of their songs, and it is often a hit or miss, as, at least when it comes to my personal tastes. Take Me Home is undoubtedly the highlight of the album. Unlike the previous songs, it knows exactly what it's meant to be, an absolute emotional synth wave banger inspired by the weekend's revival of the genre in 2019 but certainly more melodramatic and over the top in the way that K-pop tends to be. 
I'm also living for that sax solo at the end. Celebrate almost reminds me of what BTS would have released back in their earlier days. There's that classic old school hip hop vibe with the drum kit and the gospel choir samples peppered throughout. It's a pretty satisfying end to an otherwise, I guess, interesting mixed bag EP. Starstruck is the debut EP of 20 year old singer Maud Tour. It's a great starting point. It's got catchy lyrics and pleasant tunes, but there is definitely room for improvement, of which you can see in her later singles like One More Weekend and Furniture, which I find a lot more appealing and interesting. But overall, I think Latour is someone to look out for, especially in the in the future pop sphere. Uptension member turned soloist Kim Woo Sok returns with a new EP. While his debut EP Greed was an average but serviceable first release, I find his second project Tasty a lot sweeter, pun intended, and a lot more pleasant. The title track Sugar is one of the few K-pop title tracks that I've actually liked so far in the year. The EP does lose some energy towards the second half, so in that way, I prefer the first half of the EP compared to the second. In comparison, fellow Uptension member also turned soloist, Lee Chun Hyuk's Splash EP has the opposite reaction. Bedlam was a good start, and then the next three tracks turned me off completely, but the last two tracks I feel more receptive to largely due to my own musical preferences. However, I do appreciate how well the project overall makes use of Lee's rapping abilities to its advantage and perhaps help mitigate the limitations set by his vocal singing abilities. Wavy returns with an EP that is definitely not as well-rounded and cohesive as their last album, but it makes a decent attempt at following its footsteps. Kickback is lame in comparison to their previous title tracks. It almost gives off the vibes of a lackluster NCT 127 track. Action figure needed more polish in my opinion. The horns are cool and adds a touch of theatricality and bravado that fits well into Wavy's concept, but unfortunately could not carry the entire song on its back. I couldn't help but feel bored throughout the song. The only time I do perk up is when we arrive at the bridge, which does save the song for me. If the chorus went off harder or packed more of a punch to contrast the verses in the pre-chorus, it would elevate the song to where its potential is. Again, my boredom could have been easily remedied by a better chorus. All For Love is a great song, and it's probably my favorite track off the EP. I love that it starts off quiet and the chorus hits you with a beautifully catchy and emotive hook. It's all for love! And the EP ends on a good note with good time. A fun, upbeat song with great harmonies, which is definitely an interesting way to end an, an otherwise fairly subdued, melodramatic toned EP. A raw and confessional album from critically acclaimed artist Perfume Genius features subtle soundscapes, wonderful stories, and great lyrics. Truthfully though, only two songs caught my attention enough to go back and listen to again. Describe, which feels like a weighted blanket in a really really good way, and On the Floor, a funky little song. Confession time, I was listening to a lot of pop and k-pop music this month, so whenever I switch to a more serious piece of work like Set My Heart on Fire Immediately, it's hard to pay attention to lyrics and actually take it in because I usually let those good vibes wash over me. My mind is a bit like a sieve and listening to good vibes pop music doesn't really help hone my skills in processing heavier and deeper topics and subject matter. So apologies if my analysis for a project like this is not as in-depth as the previous ones, but hmm. Now this is an interesting EP. Dossie, a K indie duo, made a great collection of cover songs. Admittedly, the only one I knew about before was Fairy of Shampoo because TXT made a remade it in their Dream Chapter Eternity album. However, from that I can extrapolate that Dossie does a great job of transforming songs into their own. Alright, let's get into Ghost 9's debut EP. Soul was a weird title track to go with. I get what they were going for, but I don't think they executed it as well as they could have. I do appreciate the creativity, but it's a little too all over the place for me. The ostinato is piercing to the ears and way too distracting, especially since it doesn't really fade away until the chorus and then it comes right back afterwards. Therefore, they don't really give you enough time to rest your ears. It comes back way too much for my liking and is almost on the same layer as the vocals, so it's really hard to even pay attention to when they are singing. Uno has the same problems, down to the annoying ostinatos, except at least they have the decency to push it a little bit further back. 
but the pacing is also really whack in this. The post chorus speeds up when I feel like they should have put that part towards the end instead for a more climactic ending. Star Boy is sweeter on the ears. If I was the CEO of Maru Entertainment, this would have been my choice as the title track, but I guess their company wanted them to stand out from the others, which did work because Soul MV has 13 million views. But Starboy is such a great song though, I'm sad it doesn't have as much publicity. They could have at least made it the lead track, like a second single to promote during music shows, but big sad. Monday to Sunday is probably my favorite song because I am such a sucker for the basic cutesy love songs. Overall, this is a pretty decent debut EP. I just wish the, flat, the first two songs didn't exist like this. <laughs> A great collection of personal stories about what it's like to be a girl being led around and mistreated by boys. Despite its short length, it wastes no time waffling around. The lyrics packs a punch, whether it, if it contains a scathing critique of rape culture and victim blaming, or whether they just carry candid venting of Beach Bunny's scumbag boyfriends. It's a great release and I'm always down for angry woman yelling. Love or Take by Pentagon Their previous EP Daisy was really good and thankfully they keep up that same energy in this latest release. I'm extra glad that Hui was still able to participate in this comeback despite his enlistment. I've always been fond of Pentagon title tracks but I only started getting into their deeper discography when Daisy dropped and it's really good to finally feel more receptive to their music after all this time. 10 seconds is a great way to introduce the EP. I love the little harmonies halfway and how it sort of builds up, stays in place, and then comes crashing down in a really satisfying release. Do or Not is also a really really good title track. It seems that they found their footing in the pop rock inspired genre. I feel like this has the same upbeat and carefree summer vibes that are sort of siblings with Shine, Naughty Boy, and Humph in the fresh concepts area. It's a great example of being cute and youthful without being patronizing or infantilizing your members. But this most likely has more to do with how Pentagon can produce their own music, which is a privilege that most K-pop groups do not have. That's Me is single-handedly carrying the Daft Punk legacy on its back. I really appreciate the lengths to which they went to on this track. It's got a lot of personality and fun parts. However, I don't know if I can take anything that says, I'm a super hot, call me funky winky boy, very seriously. Baby I Love You, One Plus One, and Sing A Song are all great songs. And Hui's solo, Boy In Time, is an excellent display of the man's vocal talent. It does end the album in a decidedly unexpected turn, as most of the songs are fun and upbeat, but this is a depressing reminder that Hui will be gone for two whole years while he does his military service. Due to its fun concept and cohesion, I've decided to put the project in my 2021 Albums of the Year waitlist. We'll see if it stays there. This EP is from another new group boy group, BDC, which stands for Boys to Capo. This group consists of three former Produce X 101 contestants. The title track, Moon Rider, seems influenced by the sci-fi wave sweeping through the K-pop industry with its heavy bass line, orchestra strings, and gated reverb, but otherwise kinda does its own thing. However, it wasn't until I heard just the instrumental at the end of the EP wherein I realized I preferred the instrumental over the original song. It isn't so much because I dislike their vocal performance. The instrumental on its own is pretty sick, but I don't know, the vocals don't really add much to it, just extra padding that distracts you from the instrumental. I can't help but compare them to other, better, synthwave songs like Take Me Home by ATEEZ and Vladi Da by Everglow, which I think have vocal performances that are, I don't know, more heterogeneous, more varied, and therefore offers a more dynamic listening experience. But I suppose such a thing is the consequence of BDC only having three members whose voices are pretty similar to each other. I think if they had more members, or even if their voices were more different to each other, there would be more opportunities to mess around and experiment. Oh my god, I hate this EP, I listened to it once, and no, I don't ever want to listen to this again, not even to review it. Next. <sighs> I know K-pop typically encourages eclectic albums with different genres of varying degrees of quality, but ONF's 2021 album is one where such a concept is made most obvious. So far, this is definitely one of the better projects released this year. 
Beautiful Beautiful is energetic and pretty different to what you'd expect a boy group to release, especially in today's K-pop climate, where their peers are releasing darker, masculine concepts. I hated their last title track, Suck Fit Swimming, so I was pleasantly surprised at this sudden change in direction. The pre-release single My Name is absolutely adorable, and definitely does a great job of introducing the members in a fun, memorable way. It's a smart move considering this is ONF's latest comeback since Road to Kingdom, which surely provided them an onslaught of new fans who need a refresher on who the members are or need an introduction to who the members are. Contrast these super sweet songs with the album's highlight, The Realist. It's a track with subtle production and unique soundscape, giving T- Tame Impala a run for their money. Secret Triangle, Feedback, and Trip Advice are all also really enjoyable deep cuts to support the album's high points, making this album one of the better K-pop releases of the year. Killer by Mireille Here is the first EP of recently debuted K-pop group Mireille, whose members are also the remnants of Produce X 101. I am loving this futuristic theme they've got running through the EP, found in songs like We Are Future, Killa, and Higher. Higher would have been my choice for a title track, but that has a lot to do with how it fits well into my taste in rain music. Despite its high energy and interwoven musical traits, it shows a level of restraint that I don't typically find in other groups. However, my, my favorite song is still Sweet Dreams. It's a chorus is really on another level. Really looking forward to seeing more of this group. The second album for male soloist Jong Sue Woon features enjoyable but otherwise forgettable coffee shop music. I also don't really find his voice that exceptional. The EP aims for a particular mood and hits with a point-blank accuracy. It stays consistent and does not stray far from the intended atmosphere. For K-pop, that's pretty rare and its loyalty to the vision should be commended, but I don't particularly find this project that outstanding. It's just not for me. 23-year-old Canadian artist Elio just released a decent collection of catchy, pleasant pop music with cute lyrics. The vibes are good, a bit a little basic, but otherwise makes for a good listen. Weekday is a four-piece Korean indie band. I'm loving the vibes in this EP. You can tell they were definitely inspired by the 1975, especially their intro song, with that same echoey vibe that the 1975 always does with basically all of their albums but yeah i really like this ep and i'm looking forward to hearing more from them in the future the dry spell of girl group comebacks certainly warps one perceptions of new releases i've mentioned many boy group comebacks on the list but weekly's ep is is one of the very few that got mixed in with boy group comeback season regardless ever since their debut weekly is a group to look out for they prove it once again with a cute title track and a decent EP full of stunning vocals and fresh pop music that hovers on saccharin, but whose feet stay firmly placed in the arena of tasteful sweet. So this month in total, I listened to 20 albums. From now on, I'm going to start limiting myself to listening to only 15 projects. The biggest reason for this is that writing out these summaries is hard, and I tend to keep putting it off until it's very late already. However, another thing I realize is that I need to give a project multiple listens so that I can actually process whatever it is I'm listening to. I find that I have the tendency to listen to something new and then move on to the next without really giving it more careful consideration. So I find that this monthly exercise is would not be worth my time if I didn't challenge myself to think more about the music that I'm actually listening to, which is what this monthly exercise was supposed to be for. It was implemented for that very reason. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about my songs of the day because I'm tired, so I'll just put them up on the screen. Um, what about you? What did you listen to this in the month of March? Did you listen to any of the albums I listed? Is there any artist or album that you would recommend that I listen to in April? And what do you think of the spread that I just made? Actually, I made a lot of spreads. I made one for obviously my summary, my calendar, and I started a new notebook. So I made the cover page for that notebook as well as um, the calendar for my songs of the day where i can put my songs of the day so yeah what did you think of these spreads tell me if you like them in the comments and i'll see you guys next week if i make another video next week (laughs) 